Father, we thank you. Thank you for the blood that was shed. We give you praise, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you because we are not here by chance or by accident. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To God be all the glory. Thank you for the dedication we're having today. Thank you so much, O Lord, for the birth of this new baby. Thank you for all the babies that you've given us this year. Thank you for last year. Last year was a year for girls. This year is a year for year for boys and year for more. Thank you in the name of Jesus that pregnant women would deliver safely. We hear the voice of the mother and they hear the voice of the baby. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Let the entrance of your world bring forth light and understanding to the simple. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. 2023 is a year of fulfillment of prophetic promise. I said 2023 is a year of what? Fulfillment of prophetic promise or promises, as the case may be. This year, the promise you have been waiting for. This year, the desires I've been trusting God for. The time of manifestation has come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no force in hell that can stop it. There is no force on earth that can stop it. For the time of manifestation has come. The Bible says in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ came into the world. Time of fullness of manifestation is here. In the name of, you are going to see multiplication as you have never seen before. You are going to see increase as you have never seen before. You are going to see it with us in church. You are going to see it with us as family. You are going to see it in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name. In the name of Jesus Christ. And it's a year of laughter. I say it's a year of laughter. <laughs> I just saw a revelation right now. I saw that thing. It's, it's like, you know, something that has been tied. Tied so, so tightly. And it's like, how can this thing be loosened? How can, you, how can there be a way out of this? It's so tight. It's so, it's so, it's so strongly bound together. So strongly bound together. But again, in just a fraction, in just a, like a flick, that which looks so tightly put together just started loosening up. Just started loosening up. Just started loosening up. Just started loosening up. And therefore, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, oh, there will be great deliverance. There will be great victories. I say great deliverance. Great victories. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And this is the year for our campus. I say it's the year for our campus. It's the year for our campus. It's the year for our campus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What your eyes have seen, what your ears have heard, your mouth will testify. I say your mouth will testify. I say your mouth will testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see situations in the street that's like them bound and bound, but you know it's just, it's loosening up. It's loosening up. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give God praise. In Jesus name. Let me take you to the scripture. Genesis 26 from verse number 1. Genesis 26 from verse number 1. It reads and I quote. There was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines, in Gera. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. 
dwell in the land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will take your descendants and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Why? Does that not sound good? Look at it. It said, dwell in the land. I will be with you. We looked at that last week. I will bless you. For to you and your what? Your descendants, I will give all the lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is a covenant keeper, not a covenant breaker. He died. He was already dead. But God said, the promise I gave to him, your father, I have not forgotten it. it. That even though he was no longer on the scene, he said, no, I will still keep my word and my oath to him. <laughs> he now says, what? Well, but five. Because why will I do that? Because Abraham what? Obeyed my word, my voice. And what again? Kept my child. And what again? My statutes and my Lord, Abraham obeyed. This moment, and then what did Isaac do? Isaac also what? Obeyed. We can, we can paraphrase that things like that because we now say he obeyed. Isaac obeyed. So Isaac dwelled in Gerah. So Isaac obeyed. Isaac what? Obeyed. Also obeyed. This morning I have a word for you which is entitled to what? Pathways in the spirit. Pathways in the spirit. Fulfillment of prophetic promises. Pathways in the spirit. Or in modern, in, in, in a common language, let's put it that way, you can say highways. Highways. You know, highways lead to destination. So, in the same way, this is are to lead us into fulfillment of prophetic promises that God is giving to us. Fulfillment of prophetic promises pathways in the spirit. Let me say this. Let me make this very clear to you. You know, there are pathways in the spirit. And these pathways are to help us to get to our destination in God. Destiny is simply destination into God. And God has created pathways that will lead us into the fulfillment of our prophetic destiny. We have learned this that many times we are unable to get to those pathways. I'll break it down further for all. What? Fathers create pathways for their children. Listen to me very well. Fathers what? Create pathways for their what? For their children. For those of us who are fathers here, listen to me. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, will impact into your generation. I say whatever you do, or whatever you don't do, will impact your generation. Look at this. Look at verse 5 again. Why did, let's go to verse number 2. Verse number 2. Then the Lord appeared to what? To him, or to Isaac, and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Sleep in the land which I shall tell you. Watch this one. What did Isaac do that should position him for this manifestation? What? Yeah. Look at it. Verse number 1. Verse number one. There was famine in what? In the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of who? And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of what? Philistines in Gerah. He was on his way. He went to Abimelech. He was on his way out of the land. He, because of the famine, he was sent to 
for challenging. You will have missed God. You will have gone out of God's plan and God's will. Then by number two, God appeared to him before he could take the vehicle out of God's plan and will for him. So what did he do? Nothing. But because of what his father did. God said, oh, I have a covenant with your father. And because of that, I can allow you to take this vehicle that will take you out of my plan, out of my will, out of my purpose for you. In 1995, one of In that process, we may talk about how the plan has told him about what's the plan. And that's how he entered. The pastor will be the last person to enter. And the moment we close the door, nobody was. Nobody told me. That's the way I feel. That's where I was told. So the moment, so we don't go for prayer meeting at 5 and training at 5 10. Everybody will enter and we start to pray from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And I'll stand there at the door. And the Lord said, so did you see that nobody could enter after you left the door? I said, yes. Yet the same thing when you are the father in your family, of your household. That the door shall be locked the enemy will not be able to walk. And then when you open the door to you, the enemy you want, I mean, whatever door you, whatever you allow, will be allowed in your family. Whatever you close the door to, you also the word to your family. You know why? Not because as a father, you are the door to your family. Sometimes, this is what the Lord Open the door for that thing to run in your bloodline. You open the door for that thing to run in your bloodline. I know somebody, but thank God for you the fact you have shut the door to the wrong thing. But now, you know, it's better when you are aware and you are conscious, you are positioned to ensure that some things do not run. So important, and as uh, God is giving me my idea to give you, so sometimes we think what we do, what we don't do, what it doesn't really matter. That whatever you do, whatever you don't do, matter, matter, especially, especially the next generation. That's what we That's number seven. And the men of the place asked about who? His wife. And he said, What did he say? Is my what? Was she a sister? For he was afraid to say, Is my what? Because he thought, What? Let the men of the place kill him for Rebecca because she was so beautiful, or she's beautiful to behold. That's number now it came to pass when he had been there a long time. How many times? How, how long now? A long time. The Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked through the window and saw that there was Isaac in what? Saying, What did he do was doing here? Maybe they were sleeping. Maybe they were only in their neck. They were what? They were, uh, that's not where they were dancing. You know? So he endeavored to Rebecca his wife. That's number nine. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, What of your is your what? Your wife. So how could you say she's my what? Sister. Isaac 
says to you, let us go, let us die and account the past. Verse number 10. And Abimelech says, let me see where you have gone to work. One of the women that came up came with the wife, and she had brought food and all. Verse 11 says, Abimelech had all the people saying, he is talking to this man and his wife shall surely be put to all the put to death. Now, where did Isaac plant that corn? What? Where did he land that corn? Let's go to James chapter 12. James chapter 12. Come back from the corn. Because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that you have done to? Why did you not tell me that she was your? Verse number 19. Why did you? Verse, okay. Why did you say she is my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is the wife. Take her and go your way. Look at that. Question is this. Was Isaac born at this time? Do you have any record in scripture that Abraham said, look, this happened, I did this, I did that? You know that many times as fathers, some of the weaknesses, some of the areas we don't share with the next generation. Hmm? So how did Isaac now learn that? Because of the atmosphere. You create fathers, create pathways and atmosphere in the spirit. You do need to tell them to say what? Do this or do that. Because of the atmosphere, children come and they latch into it. And you find, that is why you find some children, find some children, they say, you, you are just so much like your dad. You behave so much like your dad. Why? Because that boy or that person is plugging into something that the father has created. Let me tell you, whenever you are acting, whenever you are doing some things, think of the generation that is world. Don't just think, oh yes, I want to do this, this is what I want. Think of the impact of that thing on your children. Think of the impact of that thing on the next generation. Because whatever you do, you open the door. And now, let me also say this, which will, which will help us a bit, you know. Or let me say this, before I say this one, that pastors also create pathways for their congregation. Pastors create pathways for their what? Congregation. So, the way a pastor lives is also important. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The way the pastor lives and the way, or let me put it this way, the way those who are in leadership in that place, the way they conduct their life matters too. Have you read in scriptures where even Jesus said, for your sake I what? I sanctify myself. Because Jesus also, you know the primary thing that he has come to do, he came to create pathways for the entire world. So that when we follow what he follow his example, we can get to where God wants us to be. Uh, that is why, wives, you need to be praying a lot for your husbands. You need to be praying a lot for your husband. And husband be praying for your wives. And I can tell you something. When you see something that may impact negatively, it is better you start to take action. Don't say, well, nobody should hear, nobody should know. Because by the time the entire thing will burst open, what will happen? It will have impact on everybody. Fathers have a big responsibility because of the next generation. And the Bible says, children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is what? Is our reward. Meaning that even though you say this one is my child, this one is my baby, you are, it, uh, the truth of the matter is that you are just a caretaker. Because he will come to ask you at the end of the day what you have done with the life of the one that he gave to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is a God of order. Hello? God is a God of order. We are not existing in just a vacuum. 
there is an order, especially in the kingdom of God. And the, let me say this, the head, and sometimes we say it, especially men quote it, don't you know I'm the head in this home? You're right. You are the head, but don't quote that in, in, in what? Out of context or in a vacuum. Because you are the head of the home, you are the head of your wife, and can I do a little bit of a detour? I've not even started my message today. But you are the head of, you are very, very right. You are the head. Hello? Now, if you are the head, you are the one doing the education, come. Because maybe this message is uh, being brought up because of this baby dedication. You are, you are the head. Where is the head? This is the head. So if he is the head, then the wife is what? His wife is the body. Now can, you, can the head quickly go and check to see outside and the body sit here? No, no, quickly, let the head go. <laughs> no, uh, please try. The head, the head, let the body sit down. The head just quickly go and call. Uh, what? Which means where the head goes, the body will eventually what? Will eventually go. But not even just that. Where is the head? What is in the head? The eyes. What is also in the head? The mouth. So what do we use the eyes to do? To see. My dear ones, if you're a father, part of your responsibility is for you to be able to see where God wants your family, the direction he wants your family to go. To see. To see. Somebody said, but how do you see? When you connect to the one that sees all things, it will start to show you and direct you. Every child that God has given to you, his plan is for you to connect that child to that child's prophetic destiny in God. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not what? He will not depart from age. That is why I talk about destiny or destination a lot in this place. Because you are not an accident of creation. God created you for a purpose. And uh, part of your working with him, following him, is for you to be able to fulfill the purpose that he has for you. What else is in the head? War. It is to help you to war. Hear from who? From what is happening from channel 9? From channel 10? From channel 10? Uh, yeah, because that is where most people, what most people hear, that is where our hearing comes from. Instead of you to listen to the voice, you are just hearing the noise. The Bible says Abraham obeyed the word, the noise that was happening around. Obeyed the voice. God is to help you hear what God is saying to you about your situation, about your circumstance, about your to able to hear so that you can what? What you hear, you can now what? To do what? To speak it. That is why hearing is before you get to the ear, before you get to the mouth. You hear and then you what? You speak. I stood here before the beginning, as I, as I came to the pulpit and I started declaring, I was speaking for. Because what you don't declare, you are not likely to word. Experience. And if this is given to you to declare and to decree, you must be careful what you are saying. Because what you say, you are creating the future for yourself. So when you look at the child, the child is a you, 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 you terrible boy. You know, you were. Ah, that boy is going to be terrible for you. Better look at the child and start to create, and especially when they are young. When they are young, because by the time they are old, it's a bit, but when they are young, that is why those of us who are young fathers, it's a huge advantage. Because start to declare over that child. Declare over that child. Somebody said, but how about when my husband is not born again? What is it? But you are born again then you can step in and start to carry it out. Because I've been talking about fathers, does not mean that you as a mother cannot do it. 
Amen. The greatest challenge we have with this generation are delinquent youth. Delinquent youth. And the reason is because this challenge with the families. Failed families will produce failed society. Hello, somebody. Failed family. I'll give you a very good example. Adolf Hitler came from a home. Came from what? Look at the havoc he caused. Up till today, they are still talking about what he did. How many years ago? Five years ago? Twenty years ago? Fifty years ago? In the same way, what Putin is doing to Ukraine, they will talk about it years after. And he also came from a home. He came from a home. Fathers do your own. Those children, they are given to you by God. Be praying for them. Be standing in the gap. Be connecting them to their prophetic destinies in God. Somebody said, you know, uh, I went, I don't know why she's behaving like this. You know, I don't normally buy the most expensive things in Maya in, in, uh, in for, 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 for her. <laughs> I said, it's not buying the most expensive things. Those are what? Things. The Bible does not say connect them to the most expensive things in Maya. This is called instruction in fatherhood 101. Better listen to me and start to do what? Put this into practice. Somebody said, I trust pastor will be prophesying over them and that thing will work. They don't spend that time with me. I love children, they spend, but they spend more time with their parents, not me. So you are, you are the one that has the duty to do what I'm talking about. Amen. Pathways in the spirit. Abraham created the pathway of obedience. The pathway of what? Obedience. And this is so powerful. Let's go back to verse number 5. Abraham obeyed verse number 5. Genesis 26 from verse number 5. What did he say? Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And even though, when did this happen? When did this happen? If you have a Bible like mine, you see the, there's a dot that says Abraham obeyed. At the beginning of that particular verse, did you, did you, can you look at it? I'm showing you how I study my Bible. Genesis 26. If you go to verse 5, that verse 5, you see a little dot there, like three dots. Did you see it? Click it. If you click it, what does it show you? Or where will it take you to? Genesis what? Genesis what? 22. Genesis 22. Let's go to Genesis 22 because it's taking us, it's referring us to what I, Abraham did that caused these to become you know, where the Bible is now referring to. Genesis 22. Now it came to pass. In fact, if you go there to verse 16, specifically to verse 16. Verse 16. And he said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done what? This thing. And I have not withheld your what? Your son, your only son from what? From me. In blessing I will what? Bless you. But let's go to verse number 1. Genesis 22 verse number 1. Now it came to pass after this thing that God what? Tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Verse number 2. Then he said, Take now your son. 
your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a bond offering on one of the mountains of which I shall well tell you. Verse number three. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and split the wood for the bond offering and he arose and went to the place which God had what told him. Take, what did God say to Abraham? Take your what? Your what? Your only son, thank you. He didn't say take one, if you've heard about seven. And God said take one of the seven. You know it's easy. Sometimes you look at the, 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 this one that is so problematic that we've been talking about. Eh? Eh? He said so this one that we, 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 we spoke and spoke, the boy just listen. And then this one is really one. Okay, go and pack, go, 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 go and pack your loads and we're going. At least we can give this one to... No, he said, take your son, your only son. What was God teaching Isaac? Number one, what? Obedience. Number two, yeah, what? Make me your priority. Learn to give me the best that you have so that you can also receive my word, my best. And Abraham obeyed. He took his son, and everything like that, verse number 3. Then he now said, So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and Isaac, verse number 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. Verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the lad, and I will go yonder and worship. How old was Isaac at this time? Isaac was about how many years old? About 13, 14. It was not a baby. It was already 14 years old. But there's something that Abraham has created in that home. A culture of obedience. And it's now said, I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and will come back to you. But So Abraham took the wood of the bond offering, laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and two of them went together. Verse number. But Isaac spoke to Abraham and to his father and said, my father, he said, here am I, my son. Then he said, look, to, look, the, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Then Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to where? To the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in the altar and he bound Isaac, his son. He, and he did what? Laid him on the altar. How old was Abraham about around this time? How do you think he would be? Or he was? How old was he when he had Isaac? 100. So if he had another 13 or 14 years, how old will he be? 113, 114. How old, how, how fast do you think a 114 year old man can run? Eh? You can enter him for Olympics 100 meters. Uh, if that child, if Isaac had taken off, do you think Abraham would have been able to catch him? But Abraham said, lay there. Bound him. Put him there. What was Isaac doing? Obey obedience. His trust in his father. Now wait a minute, what is happening here? You know, trusted in his father. Verse number 10. And Abraham stretched out his hand took the night to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything for him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Was it God's plan to kill Isaac? What was the plan? It was a test of obedience. What would God use Isaac for? Nothing. But God wanted to see, will Abraham be ready to surrender his most precious possession to me? Then, from there, verse 13, he now said, Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. 
verse number 14. Then Abraham called the name of the place what? The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Now let's go to verse. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. Verse 16. And he said, by myself I have sworn that because you have done this. This was when Abraham was 114 years. By the time he was being referred to in Genesis 26, he was already dead. But God said, I will not forget what you have, what you have done for me. He said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, in blessing our word and in multiplying our word and your descendant as the stars of and at the sand which is on the seashore and your descendant shall possess the gates of the enemies. I woke up with this. That when you learn to obey me, I will make you a star. Make you a star. You know, many times we say, Lord, bless me. I want the blessing of God. But the blessing of God does not happen in a vacuum. That is why I want to share three things with you this morning and I will close. Three things. Let's go to Genesis 26 from verse number 12. Three things. Genesis 26. Then Isaac, after that experience, sold in the land, and he reaped what? On the foot, and the Lord what again? Blessed him. Isaac sold in the land. Number one is this. These are basic principles that the entire kingdom of God is built upon. Number one. The kingdom of God is built on the principle of what? Sowing and reaping. Or seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. When you hear seed, sometimes we are thinking of, oh, maybe you're talking about money. I'm not talking about money. It's far, far bigger than that. Seed, seed, your time, your life, your possessions, everything. Seed, time, and harvest. Let me tell you something. Whatever you sow, <laughs> whatever you sow, you, and then, the, and then and there's something else there. Harvest is always what? Greater than the seed. I was reading, not I was reading, it, it was, it was, mommy pastor that was telling me, he said, did you see what Harry wrote about his family in the I said, what did he, he? I said, yes, I saw some things there. And it's, she said, he said some things here and there. I just shook my head. I said, he's sowing a seed. I said, he's sowing a seed. And the harvest is always bigger than what? It's always bigger than the seed. You just wait and see. God will keep all of us alive. You will hear. Wait just down the road. Just down the road. He said his father called the two of them, the two of the two boys. He said, don't, don't, don't be disagreeable like this. Don't let me spend my last days in sorrow. That is Charles. He called the two of them. But he still went on and continued lambasting and continued doing all of that. You know, <laughs> he's sowing his seed. By it, he will reap the harvest. What? It's called seed and what? Time. Time. And then what will follow? Harvest. And then the Bible says that <laughs> press down, shaking together, and what? And running over except there is repentance. The entire kingdom of God is built on that principle. Don't think, oh yes, I'm, I can. No, no, no. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Make that is why it is so important this year that you are sowing good seeds. And if you have been sowing good seeds, continue to sow good seeds. Because whatever you sow, you will reap. Seed, let me show you Genesis 8.22. Genesis what? 8.22. Three things and I will close. And I will break these things down in the days to come. Why the earth? In fact, let's go to verse 20. We can see it here. If you read verse 20, there's a, there's a title on top of verse 20. What is the title? Look at your Bible. It's there. 
What is the title there? God's word. God's covenant with creation. This is God's covenant with his creation. And now, verse 22. What is that? Verse 22 now says what? While the earth remain, seed, what? Time, harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall no war cease. While the earth rem- is the earth still remaining? Hello? Are we in summer now? Were we in winter? Uh, were we in winter? Winter and what? Summer? Is this day? Hello? How many, how many hours are in a day? 12 hours, not 24. Somebody say, is that not 24 hours in a day? No, you are mixing day and night together. 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night. Day and night shall not see. As long as day and night continues, as long as there's winter and summer, as long as all of these are continue, seed, time, and harvest will not war. So my advice, my counsel to you is this. Be careful the seed you're sowing. In your relationship with people, in the life you are living, be careful because there will be harvest. Will, the, the harvest will eventually follow. It's just a question of time. Amen? Number two is this. Don't ever forget this. That God is the source. God is the source. That means you cannot receive anything except it's been given to you from heaven. We've been declaring, oh yes, God, look at this. It's a year of laughter. It's a year of supernatural habit. It's a year of that. But don't ever forget this, that we cannot receive anything except what? John 3, 27. Let's go there. John chapter 3, verse number 27. John 3, 27. It is God that gives all things. So if we don't connect with him, or don't connect to him, John answered and said, a man can receive, can receive what? Can receive nothing, unless it has been given to him from heaven. A man can receive nothing, unless it has been given to him from heaven. So which means that it's better make sure you are connected to heaven. Make sure you are connected to the one that gives all things. God is the source. You know what, what that blesses me? Is the fact that this has been a blessing to me because whatever is happening in the natural, whatever challenge is in the natural, whatever thing that looks impossible in the natural, I've learned to just lift my eyes onto war, to the one who is the source. And I know that there's nothing in the natural that can stop what God is able to do. Whatever you can conceive, believe God for, you will be able to receive it. Whatever. Oh, we don't know how much the thing is. You don't know how challenging. You don't know how thing is. The problem is that you are facing something else. You are distracted. You are looking at the problem, not the solution. You are looking at the issues, not the source. You are, your eyes are focused on what you have, not the one that can provide all things. And as long as you are focused on that, you will be limited to what the earth has to offer. God is source. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is source. Maybe they've, they, they've checked you. They say, oh, did this thing? Ah, oh, we've looked at you. You are unable to give what? To, uh, uh, you are unable to conceive. And they, they say, we've tested it. Look at this. Look at that. And this is the letter. This is everything like that. Say, Thank you so much, doctor. You don't abuse the doctor. Thank you so much, doctor. He said, but now, what did the one that resource, what has he said about it? You shall all. Eh? No, no, before he said that, what did he say? Oh, thank you. I will serve the Lord, what? And he will do what? And he will not do what? He will take sickness away. That is why, you know, in my age, you see what? He will take sickness away from the midst of you. And what will happen? 
None will be barren in the land. And the number of your days it will fulfill. Look at what he said. I will serve the Lord. The moment you say, Lord, this is what they've said. But I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. And this is the promise. You take it back to the source. Is this according to what he's saying as a source? And oh yes, look at this. Look at this. Look at what is happening. Take it back to the source. Make sure that you know he is your source. Whatever thing that you are doing, whatever thing, he is your source. The moment you always take it back to the source, there's nothing. That is why I thank God for the dream that you saw. You know, the place was totally locked up. It was shielded. How do we find a way? Then you saw that I found a way. How did I find a way? Because of what? You follow the source. He follows the source. And who is the way? Jesus is the way, the what? The truth and what? And the life. Something is going to hit the economy of nations in the days to come. That the economy will shake. But you know what? You don't have to be shaking with the economy of nations if you know the source. If you found the source. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, number three is this. Obedience to God will activate God's blessing in your life. Obedience to God will what? Activate the blessings of God in your life. So, blessing does not come. I deliberately am saying blessing, not just miracle. Because miracle is temporary. Blessing is perpetual. Which one do you want? I say, which one do you want? Yeah, miracle is temporary. Blessing is perpetual. Obedience to God and His word will activate the blessing of God in your life. I can talk, take you to, let me take you to about two. And I, because I have about four or five here that I can take you to. But I'll just show you two of them. Leviticus 26 from verse 3. Leviticus 26 from verse 3. What does it say? If you walk in my world and keep my world and perform them, can I, can, I, can I give you a secret to live? Somebody said, oh, you know, this principalities and powers, this demon. No, no. Can I take you a secret to live above those things? Just live in obedience. A life of obedience will bind Satan. Just live in obedience. Then I will give you rain in a season. And the land shall you what? And the trees of the fruit shall what? Verse 5. Then your threshing floor shall what? The time of vintage. And the vintage shall last to the time of what? You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. Verse number 6. I will give peace in the land. You shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. Verse 7. You shall chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Verse 8. What does it say? Five of you shall chase what? And a hundred of you shall put what? Ten thousand to fight. And your enemy shall fall by the sword before you. For I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful and multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. But where does it start? If Verse 3. Verse 3. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commands and perform them. Deuteronomy 20 from verse number 1. What does it say? Everybody say now. What does now mean? Means 2023. <laughs> what does now mean? Does tw now means 2022? Does now means 2021? Does now means 2020? He said now. Now, in this day, in this season, it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his word, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these what? Shall what? And what again? Because... Because, because your name is uh, John, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 3. And what? 
Oh my God. Blessed shall you be what? And blessed shall you be where? Verse 4. Blessed shall you be, shall be what? And the produce of your, and the increase of your, and the increase of your, and the offspring of your flocks. Verse 5. Blessed shall be your, and your what? Verse number 6. Verse number 7. The Lord himself will cause one word to all rise up against you. If you don't understand that, you think, oh yes, I know. The Lord will cause that my enemy, her name is, uh, uh, uh? Her, her name is, uh, what? Well, you give the name. That my enemy, that my, that's not what he's talking about. The enemies there, what are the enemies there? The lack, the wants, sickness, everything that is trying to hinder God. I mean, hinder you from becoming everything that God wants you to be. And sometimes people can become the channels, but he's not talking about people here. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way, and they will walk. Please, seven ways. Verse number eight. Then what will happen? The Lord will command the blessing. What does this, this is where I want to? The Lord will do what? What does that mean? The Lord Himself will command it and say, No, 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 no. Go to the house of the go to the house of that. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses, in all to which you set your hands to do. He will bless you where? In the city of Melbourne. Where the Lord your God is giving you. He will bless you in the land. Don't ever forget this. As we navigate this year. And I'll be breaking this thing down. In the days to come. Number one. The principle of the kingdom is what? Based on what? Seed, time and harvest. Sowing and what? Reaping. Number two is this. God is what? God is source. Is the source. Is the source of your every source of your life of your provisions. God is learned to look to the source. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, obedience to God's word will activate the blessings of God in your life. Amen. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice right now. I've declared your word. Lord, I pray that none will be a forgetful hearer. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus by the word that that they've heard this morning will continue to resonate in the hearts, in the lives of your people not just throughout today, not just throughout this month, but throughout this year. Help each person that the seed will be sowing. Will be seeds that bring forth the harvest that we desire. And Lord, help us to walk in obedience to your word. Obedience to your word. Because obedience to God's word will activate the blessings of God. Lord, we desire to see your blessings in our lives. And many times we are praying for the blessing. But you are reminding us this morning that it's not just the prayers. Because prayer without obedience will produce nothing. But when we walk in obedience... And we're standing in the place of prayers. Then it's just a question of time that we will experience that which you have desired for us. Father, I pray that no one under my voice, oh Lord my God, no one will miss out on that which you desire for them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, help each person Are there areas of adjustments that we need to make? Open eyes to see. Open ears to hear. 
open hearts to know the Lord areas where adjustments are needed, adjustments are made so that we can be partaker of everything that you have for us this year. Lord, I'm believing you. I'm trusting you that we will be partakers of everything, everything in the name of Jesus. Lord, that this year will just be a year of testimonies and testimonies and testimonies and testimonies of your faithfulness. You showed me, even at the beginning, I saw that thing tied so tightly like a knot. Tied, almost unbreakable, almost you cannot be broken into. But while we were just talking, then the thing just loosened up. The Father, issues that look almost intangible, Issues that look almost, it cannot be, you cannot, it's almost intractable. It, it, it must, that this is too hard, this is too, this, but Lord, by the name of Jesus and the power in the blood of Jesus, we lose every bondage. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, 